I don't know what plan you have for my life. Especially after all of this. But I'm just asking. I'm asking that you teach me. How to love and protect my son. <laughs> just as you have for me. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. <laughs> Hello again. It is I. You know the voice that you've tried to ignore all your life. Whenever you felt the urge to do something sneaky, insidiously wrong or opposite of what you've been taught to do right, the voice inside the realms of darkness in your mind that you can't run away from, nor turn on or off, because I'm always here, and I will always be here, until you allow me to have my way. without merit or choice. I am your lower self. I am you. Thomas. Tom. Tom. Don't you want to go find mommy's gun? Mommy's gun. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be so much fun. <laughs> Don't you think Don't so, you too? Think where's the gun? Where's the gun? Where is it? Where is it? Where's the gun, Mama? Or... This gun was your father's gun, and it was also your grandfather's gun. And I received it from his sister after he passed. And I kept it in that box upstairs, not only to protect you and I, but to remind us to never take life for granted. But I don't ever want to see you touch that gun again. Do you understand me, Thomas? Yes, Bobby. Because it's not a toy and it's nothing to play with. It's only to protect you and I from the bad people of the world. You understand? Yes, Mommy. And I love you so much, Thomas. I just want to keep you safe. I love you too, Mommy. I just want to keep you safe, okay? Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just want to make you proud, Mom. 
God, please protect him. Please protect my son. Please don't let him kill himself like his father did. God, please protect my son. Please protect them. Please give him strength. Yo, Thomas. Yo, Thomas, open up. I know you in there. You know what? He always leave this key right here. Yo, Thomas! T! Why it's so dark black in the middle here? The lights don't work. Thomas! Yo, Thomas! Come on, bro! I know you hear, I heard you scream like yo, Jesus! Thomas, you can't be doing that, man. Come on now and, bro, it looks like a freaking pigsty in here. What's going on with you? None of this dirty, come on, man. Steven. How many times I gotta tell you, bro? Stop taking my spare key and coming into my house unannounced. Now, you lucky I didn't start shooting at the door when you walked in. <laughs> you might have caught a bullet. <laughs> Speaking of gun, I see you got it locked and loaded for the devil, huh? Now, you know there ain't no such thing as black on black crime. <sighs> Man, whatever, dog. Now, ain't nobody tell you to try to move my gun off the Bible anyway. <sighs> Thank you, wrong, Chief. Hey, and more importantly, ain't nobody tell you to come up and check up on me. No, no, you didn't. But ain't that what friends do? You don't ever have to ask me to care, man. <laughs> Steve, you know what, man? What, Thomas? I'm gonna need you to walk out that same door that you walked into and stop trying to play my guardian angel. Like you've been trying to do for what? The past three months? Mm. <laughs> yeah. And on the contrary, I'm just trying to get faded enough to- To what? To what, Thomas? <laughs> to try and not make a bullet hurt? <laughs> now, you know good and well, I'm not going to sit here and allow that to happen. You got too much to live for, Thomas. <laughs> what? You heard me. Yeah, I, I, obviously I didn't hear you clearly. So how about you say that again? I said you got too much to live for. You got your life, your health, your strength, the breath in your lungs, and you got me. Look, I know what you've been going through, and I know I was hurting you to your core, but you can't allow all that you've lost to make you lose you, because you're Thomas Graham. God only made one you, and he spared no expense to making him great. Come on, bro, don't do no, this. Count down again. Four, three. Bro, Thomas, don't do Two. this. But... Stevie, go in now. Get the hell up out of my house, bro. Okay, okay, you got it. You know what, Thomas? I still love you, and I'm gonna pray for you. <laughs> You gonna pray for me? You gonna pray for me, Stevie? How about you pray that your God brings back somebody that I love so that they can save me? Pray for that, Stevie. Quiet at dinner. Matter of fact, you've been quiet ever since we left Thomas's house. What's going on with you? Man. You remember when I said something to you about Thomas and how he's been acting different for the past six months? And, you know, ever since all that stuff started happening at once? Yeah, but you told me that he was getting help and it was like about to start seeing a therapist and all that kind of stuff. I mean, honestly, if that were me, I wouldn't be able to handle all of that alone. Well, that's just it. I think, you know what? I know Thomas is going to kill himself. Wait. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. Maybe you're wrong. Maybe you're wrong and he'll be okay. I, I want him to be okay, but it's, it's like I, 
you want to be there for him and you want to try everything that you can to help him. But at this point, I don't think there's anything I can do. Especially after, earlier, man, this dude pointed a gun at me and... He did what? <sighs> Not serious. What did he do? Before we left, it got tense and he pointed his gun at me like he was going to kill me and... Oh, no, 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 no. This is what I'm going to need you to do. Start the car right now. Take Babe, me over there. It's not, it's no, not no, even, no. It doesn't no. matter. I don't care what he thought he was going to do to himself or what you thought he was going to do to himself. He's not going to point a gun at you anymore. Take me over there. It's going to be a problem for you. Let's go. Let's go. Sick of it. Just take me over there. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Ever. Amen. Thomas, son, let me help you take the pain away, my friend. You can't drink this away, Thomas. I know what we can do. We can do it together. It's right inside the glove box. Yes, Tom. Yes, Tom. Nah. Just put the gun to your temple, and I promise you. I promise you, you won't feel this pain ever, ever again. Yes, Thomas. Just pull the trigger. The gun to your gun. No one will miss you. No one doesn't care for you like I do, Thomas. Just pull that trigger. And you won't feel agony. Ever. 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 Again. Do it now. Thomas. Do it now. Do it now. Miss Thomas. Thomas. Come on. Come on, buddy. You know what they say. If you don't succeed, try, try again. Come on, Thomas. Don't you want to finish playing this game with your life? Wait. Mommy? 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 Mommy. Boy, stop calling me like you don't have any sense. I'm sorry, Mommy, but what does this mean in the scripture? Genesis chapter 22, verse 13. Then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked, and there behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. Oh, that's the ram in a bush scripture. That's when God provided Abraham with a ram in a bush instead of sacrificing Isaac on the altar. And the ram represents a way of escape. So 
whenever things are going bad in your life, God is so merciful and he'll always provide a way of escape, even if you don't think he does. So if you ever find yourself doubting God, remember, he'll never doubt you. If you go into that church, don't you do it, Thomas. Go on there. Go on there. When you're done, I'll be right here waiting for you, buddy. <laughs> the next time we're going to play for keeps, I will have your life, Thomas. <laughs> God. I don't, I don't know what to say to you. I just need to know why. Why did you, why did you take it all from me? I said, why would you take it all from me? I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. I'm a soldier in the army. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. I'm a soldier in the army. Young yeah, man, I don't think you ought to have your face on that carpet right now. We had every Bible on Sunday, and the mothers took their shoes off and they shouted all over the floor. And when I think about it, Deacon Hayes didn't even come and vacuum me. Come on, son. You gonna let my arm fall off? That's more like it. How you doing? I'm Pastor Isaiah Banks. It's great to meet your acquaintance, son. How you doing, um, <laughs> Pastor um, Thomas? Thomas Graham. Wow, that's a powerful name. Come to think of it, Jesus had a disciple. We call Doubting Thomas. The way you were on your knees? I think y'all might be distant cousins. Would you like a piece of gum, Thomas? I find that when people talking about church and God, angels in heaven, but their breath smell like going straight to hell. Now see, whatever had you on your knees in the middle of the night, it's not as bad as you think it is. So, you want to tell me what's on your mind and heart, son? I mean, Pastor Banks, how do you know, or when do you know, if or when God has forsaken you? And what do you have to do that is so wrong for me to take away everything that you love in the first place? 
Well, I'm not God. I don't know his thoughts, nor I know his ways. But what I do know, the Bible declares that, that he will never separate his love from us. Even if I tried to kill myself 10 minutes ago? Son, God is God. He's not a man that he shall lie. If you were able to tell me that you tried to kill yourself 10 minutes ago, and you're still here, that's probably because he's not through with you yet. But I'm curious. What in the world happened to make you want to kill yourself? Take your own life. I mean, the real question is, Pastor Banks, what didn't happen in such a short period of time? Well, I have open ears and plenty of gum. So tell me your story, son. Seven years prior before my world had changed, I had it all. I had one of the best real estate firms in Virginia, servicing nothing but high-end clientele and sports, television, and film. <laughs> I mean, you can't beat that. If it was a mansion, a castle, I mean, even a compound that needed to be sold on the market, trust me, I could sell it. And afterwards, I would just, you know, live it up on my commission. I never really knew my father too much, though. But my mother, <laughs> my mother, she has never forgotten me, nor forsaken me. In my eyes, she was peace and grace. Naturally, I mean, on my seventh commission check, I bought her the house of her dreams. It's a nice neighborhood. Mm -hmm. But that's only because you're gonna be living in it now. Huh? Surprise! Surprise? <laughs> oh house. my word, Thomas! What? Are you, the entire house is mine? The entire house. Oh my God. Baby, <laughs> baby! <laughs> Wait a mm -hmm. minute, now listen, listen. Listen to me, I don't I don't want this setting you back financially, Thomas. I've got my benefits, AARP. I got my social security money and everything, and I don't want to mess with none of that. Ma, Time, ma, oh my God. ma, you're fine. Look, not only is this house paid for, the taxes are paid for five years in advance. We also got your nice oh Mercedes Benz. Huh? Uh-huh. Just arrived this morning. Oh my God. Only thing goodness. we gotta do is just get it washed. <laughs> but you know I can't have you mess up your credit score. You so know I my credit is 740, everything. baby. You know it's been 740 and I'm not messing with my credit. Oh good my credit, goodness. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. Look, Ma, I'm only giving you everything that you've given me out of life. I mean, everything that you've taught me how to how to love and how to be a man as well. I just, I wouldn't be me without you. You know I got you, girl. I just wanted to repay you for everything that you've given me. I don't know how you mess up your credit score, girl. My baby. <laughs> you want to see this on the show? I got a car now. Oh, my goodness. Oh, man. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. My God. Me and Bertha can drink our coffee in the God. morning. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Although I bought my mother this home, fully furnished with no overhead bills, she still insisted to keep the house I grew up in because it was the house that my father and mother purchased before I was born. So as I said previously, I really didn't know my father, but he still made sure that my mother and I were safe. She loved the house. But, Pastor, I mean, I, I, I can go on and put words together and tell you how much pride and joy I felt that day, but I just know there would never be enough. Well, it sounds like something you always wanted to do, son. 
Now that is a true understatement, Pastor. I mean, after everything that she sacrificed for me, working two jobs to make sure that I was secure, I mean, without one murmur or complaint. She sounds like a remarkable woman. She does, doesn't she? I mean, anyways, five months after I bought my mother the house, I met a woman that I could only describe at the time as my angel. Oh. Hurry up and get here. She's late. Okay. Oh. Wow, she's gorgeous. Hey. Hey. You believe this is your water bottle, my lady? Well, it is. And I like the way you just said that. What, water bottle? No, my lady. <laughs> well, you got a real gentleman on your hand. Well, it's nice to know that gentlemen are still alive. <laughs> But it's interesting, um, I never see men on this side of the parking lot. What, a man can't come over here and get a mani-pedi? No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying usually men that come for mani-pedis are usually like homosexuals or metrosexuals. And no shade, that's no shade, because I have, you know, people in the community that I care for dearly as well. I'm just saying. I mean, I'm far from homosexual or metrosexual. <laughs> but look, I know plenty of people that's in the community as well, but we ain't talking about them, all right? We talking about me. <laughs> so what's your name? I'm Angel. Angel Malone. Well, I'm Thomas. Thomas Grant. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. <laughs> well, can you let this gentleman treat you to a spa day? I mean, I, I have no offense to that at all, but don't start something that you can't keep up because I'm no simple woman. Well, baby, if it's one thing that Thomas Graham can do, let's keep up. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so how about we go inside? Okay. <laughs> It's a pretty day outside. Sure is. Sun is out, clear skies. Wind's oh. just right. Okay, you know? melanin popping. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that was a good movie though. Sure was. But look, I really appreciate you for coming out to see that Tyler Perry film one. And I gotta say, a lot of women would have thought it was trivial to come to the movies instead of having like a Netflix and chill type of day. <laughs> but I do gotta ask, one, how'd you like the movie? And two, have you ever cheated on anybody in your past life? What did I think about Acrimony? Which I loved. I actually loved the movie, um, besides A Family That Prays. It's one of Tyler Perry's best films, one of his best works. Like the way he portrayed mental illness and narcissism through the actions of the main character, complete genius. It's crazy. I definitely got a second that. I just hate when people like belittle him and make him seem like he's some type of caricature because of his Medea movies. I mean, movies are fantastic. Come on now. But I still haven't answered my second question. Uh, have you ever cheated on anybody in your life? <laughs> my past life. <laughs> well, first of all, I've never been in that many relationships in my past, you know, due to the trust issues that I have with men and everything. But no, to answer your question, I've never cheated on anybody. When I'm with somebody, I'm faithful, I'm loyal. I'm as loyal as my options. What does that mean? What it means, Thomas, is if a man no longer treats me as an invested asset, then I'll treat him as a liability and I'll spare no grievance about it either. Hold on, so 
What you're telling me is that you're just going to up and leave a man. I mean, without any explanation, any reasoning. I mean, nothing. He's going to leave a man hanging. I mean, don't you think that's a little harsh and cruel? Honest, yes. Cruel, no. Why? Because, look, listen, men have treated women like this for years. And because of females, like, in our family, we create these theories of delusion and grandeur just to protect us from getting hurt, you know? So, like, Taraji's character in Aquaman. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, babe. And, and for me, I just won't subject myself to just anyone, especially no immature man that's going to have me in conflict with myself and my emotions. Like, I got to put myself first at all times. All times. I mean, I understand that. I, I totally get it. And I do appreciate you for being open and honest with me, babe. I mean, the best I can do for you right now is just make sure that I'm there for you, for your emotional and your mental health. <laughs> but the only thing I ask is that you just keep it a thousand women. Just be honest with me as I am with you. Just like my favorite Prince song, I thought was your girl home. Oh my God, you like Prince too? What's your favorite lyric? What's your favorite lyric? <laughs> I'm the Lucy. Would you run to me if somebody hurt you? Even if that somebody was me. Hey. hey. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's my favorite lyric. And that's my favorite song of Prince's all time. And that is how I know Thomas Graham, that the universe brought me directly to you. Well, I'm glad it did. Thomas, you looking good, baby. If God would have made anything more perfect than you, he would have kept it for himself. Mm -hmm. I even look good, girl. Oh, thank you. So, Mr. Graham. Can you honestly say that you saw us still being together after three months in complete bliss that flew by pretty fast? I'm sure you're getting tired of me, aren't you? Actually, quite the opposite. You know, I've been having conversations with myself, and I just be like, yo, T, how you feel about angels? And then I just tell myself, yo, I think she's the one. <laughs> What, I got you suffering from schizophrenia now? <laughs> See, I told you what all this premarital sex was gonna do to you. Now you out here crazy and whipped, going against everything your mother taught you. Everything my mother told me, huh? <laughs> now look at you. I mean, look at us. <laughs> now you know, they're gonna boil. You don't want to Man, I knew y'all was going to be here around this time. Man, Thomas, what's going on, Doc? Man, look. Come on now. You know I got to put your chair out for you, baby. What's going on, what's man? What's up, bro? How you doing, bro? Everything good? good? Man, everything's everything, brother. Miss Angel Monroe. Hey, Steve. How you doing? I'm doing well. Can't complain. How about yourself? I'm all right. Thanks for asking, So, Steve. have y'all ordered yet? <laughs> nah, brother. I mean, I'm afraid we just got here with, like, Ten minutes ago? Ten minutes ago. Yeah. But you know, we just got a little champagne out here celebrating, you know, loving each other. Mm. You know how we do, man. So that's what we're doing. My apologies, y'all. My apologies. Hey, you remember the young lady I was telling you about, Monica? Yeah, this is her. This is my baby. Hi. Nice yeah. to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Nice to meet you, Nice Monica. to meet you, too. Girl. Oh, my goodness. So far, I'm glad to have met him. Talk to me nice, man. <laughs> He's told me so much about their childhood um, and that they've known each other since they were, like, eight years old. Man, we've been close since like what? 
diaper days. Though. Man, take them back. It's been like forever, bro. bro. I bet you this one ain't even tell you that our mothers used to be best friends when they were younger. This explains the relationship even that much more. Well, I hope you went in for the long haul, Monica, because he's a really good guy. And as long as you know how to play Call of Duty <laughs> and make a tuna fish sandwich with Swiss cheese, you should be good. You should be good. I tell you, not the Swiss cheese from Walmart, neither. <laughs> I know how you get down. But anyway, you telling on my business, but that's why you my sis from another miss. So it's OK. I still love you. Look, everybody, I think it's time we make a special <laughs> toast to better life, okay. greater opportunities. OK. I like and it. And the call like on this one mine for the rest of my life. OK. OK. <gasps> OK. Oh, my god. Oh, my god. Oh, my god. Oh, my god, Thomas. Oh, my god. Are you serious? Are you serious right now? You're lying. You're lying. Baby. You, you're, you're, you're freaking lying. Baby, I know we've only known each other for like, what, three months? <laughs> yeah. But I feel like it's been forever. Not only my best friend, you're my lover, and everything in the middle. I just, whew, I just couldn't imagine life without you. <laughs> okay, baby. What do you say? Do you need my wife? Of course. Of course I will. <laughs> yes, sir. That's my boy right there. Hey, 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 hey. Now, nah, enough of that. All right, all right, all right. Y'all got a whole lifetime for all that. Y'all come on now. You're making me all cringe. I know, right? <laughs> Let's celebrate, because y'all are worth it. Come you're on, right, y'all. Right. Yes, my man. Yes, sir. Congratulations. I was so happy on this night. I had my best friend Stevie supporting my decision on making Angel my wife, and I was walking on a cloud of love. <laughs> Excited for my years ahead with this amazing woman that had my back. Three months later, Angel and I were married. Nine months after that, we are my beautiful baby boy, Thomas Jr. Well, Thomas, it sounds as if your life was in the right direction. You did right by your mother. You blessed her beyond her wildest dreams. Then you found the perfect wife, only to create your namesake. But then, why would a richly blessed man find himself so low that he was willing to take his own life? I think you're only scratching the surface to the real truth, son. Thomas, did you know that the Bible, as well as the Quran, and the Torah, were all westernized blueprints to the consciousness of man? Astrology, science, mathematics, hieroglyphics, as well as faith and allegory. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I, I'm just trying to make sense of this, Pastor Banks. I, I thought that believers weren't supposed to mix man-made theology with religion. No, no, son. It's all connected in the same. See, man's thoughts, imagination, and action created the ideologies of God. Why do we read the Bible, the Quran, or even the Torah? None of it doesn't become real until man's imagination connects with words and spellings to manifest them in thought. To sum it all up, Thomas, thoughts become things. Even you being here right now was evoked and manifested by you. Who did all of this, son? You. You gonna pray for me? You gonna pray for me, Stevie? How about you pray that your God brings back somebody that I love so that they can save me? Pray for that, Stevie. So come on, Mr. Thomas Graham. 
You shared with me your joy and sunshine. Now it's time for you to share your rain and your pain. See, we blame God for what he does and what he do not do. But we overshadow our participation in it all. You know what I told you? We become what we think. You came into this church broken, angry with God. So much so that you was willing to take your own life over your pain. So why, Thomas? Why? Because he took it all from me. I did everything right. Everything my mother has taught me, I did. I paid my tithes. I paid my offerings. I honored my mother and my father. Even though I never really had him in my life. Come on, son, tell your story. I was great to people on the street. I gave my everything to my wife and my son. But then God took it all away from me. Well, come on, son. What did God take from you? He took my mother from me. That Bible-believing, God-fearing, virtuous woman died in a way that no woman of God should have died. Where were the angels to protect her, huh? Where was her ram in the bush? Where was Michael or David or whoever to help save her from her enemies? So you tell me that, Pastor Banks. When all this was going on with my mom, where was God? Hello. Thomas, Thomas, please help me, baby. Ma. Something is in the house. Ma, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Slow, slow down, slow down. What, what are you talking about? Ma. You may hurt me. Ma, what? Hurry, baby, please. Hold on, Ma. I'm, I'm, I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming, Ma. Hold on. To South Plaza, please. Please, well, my mom is on the floor. Somebody ran inside the house. Somebody came in the house and broke in. Um, please, she's on the floor. She's. Mama, please, wake up. Please. I just need some help, please. Please, come, man, please. Mama, please. Please. Mama, please. 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 Mama, please. Everything was cancer. He, he afflicted my mom with cancer. I mean, who does that? And I wouldn't have known had she not been robbed of being that day because she keeps the truth from me. Like, who does that? Who, who keeps the truth from her own son? Pastor Banks. That's the banks. Pass the banks. So a death from cancer 
was God's fault. Not the food that she ate or the natural germ that infected her body. No, 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 no. It can't be natural causes, because like you said, son, it's God's fault. But please, don't just stop there. Tell me, what else did God do to you? Come on, son. I know you got more. My career, Pastor Banks, he allowed the devil to take everything from me. When the real estate market crashed due to the pandemic, I had all of my properties tied into my business account, not realizing that some of the properties still had liens on them from previous owners. So when I filed for taxes that year, I had to pay out millions. I mean, I even had to cut off all my employees. Even Stevie, who had just got married to Monica and had to downsize on her living expenses. And the same goes for me. I had to move my family from a eight bedroom, four bathroom mansion back to my mother's first house. I mean, come on. Mr. Banks, have you ever tried to scrub off the stench from your own skin? Day after day and night after night until you realize that the smell isn't coming from the garbage that you sling around, but from the pain of your own soul? No, I, I can't say that I haven't. But I hear you talking, son. I hear you talking. I hear the pain of you losing your mother. I even hear the anger and frustration from you losing your career. But those things, those things are what made you go toe to toe with God for. Come on, Thomas. My wife, Pastor. Your wife? What about your wife? Say it. What about my wife? God allowed my wife to cheat on me. Me. And he didn't even try to stop her or, or punish her. All because we lost it all. All right, son, you ready to eat? Yes. All right, make sure you don't yield a piece of now, all right? Like you did two days ago? Boy. <laughs> Kitchen. Playing on me, got all these jokes. Yo, Stevie, what's going on, brother? No, Thomas, this ain't Stevie. This is LJ down at the sanitation department, brother. I know you saw that Cowboys game last night. No, listen, listen, Thomas. I'm not calling you to talk about no Cowboys. I'm trying to give you some information that you need to know about ASAP. Look here, I'm sending you a video of something I should have sent you last night, but I ain't had time to do it. Hey, look, bro, please do not send me another clip of Dirty Joe's porn tapes, man. I do not have time for it. Thomas, it's not that kind of video. Listen to me, brother. I shot your wife and that doctor that worked down in Mary Washington Hospital, Jackson. They were doing some things that was ungodly last night, brother. Just look at the video. This dude is like an infamous cheater. This dude has slept with every doctor, every nurse, even the orderlies at Mary Washington Hospital. Hell, I took my wife, my daughter, and my mother-in-law to a party that was for my daughter. At the end of the night, my mama was missing. All right, yeah, well, I just got the videos. So I'm gonna check it out and I'm gonna call you back, all right? Thomas, look here. You're my brother, you're my friend. I'm gonna see you tomorrow at work in the sanitation department, but look here, I'm gonna light a candle for you while I'm praying tonight, because after this, you're gonna need Jesus and probably get rebaptized. I'm telling you right now, that thing that you used to call a marriage, it's pretty much over. All right, peace, brother. Sure you tell him tonight, all right? Yes, I got it. I'm gonna tell him. All right, we got a flight to catch. Right. Oh, so at six, right? Six thirty. Six thirty. Okay. I'm being in all day. All right. I'm not. I got it. Okay. I'm gonna tell him. Hey, 
son. How you doing, love? Good. How's your day going? Good. That's good. Hey, Tom. What's wrong with you? So when were you going to tell me you were stepping out on me, huh? And who the hell is Jackson? And how long has this been going on? As long as you've been on the back of that dump truck, throwing trash and not even making an effort to start your practice back up. So you telling me, over six months ago, that's when I started that job. You've been cheating behind my back. Close your ears. You've been seeing this dude after my mom done that? No. I've known him even before that. But I never had a reason to get to know him better. But like I said, the guy that I married is nothing like the man that I am living with, whose attitude, focus, and even bedroom activity is extremely lackluster. And for me, I needed more. You needed more? Mm-hmm. Tell me how can I give you more when I've sacrificed everything for you, for Junior, for us, for this family, and after everything that I've lost, my mom, my, my career, our house, our car, our bank accounts, and you need more? And what does all of that have to do with me? What? Do you close it? What does this have to do with you? So after everything that I've sacrificed, you have not once tried to contribute to this family or to Junior. You haven't even tried to go out and look for a job after you didn't left the hospital after leaving the salon. Well, I'm glad you mentioned it. That's actually where I met Jackson from. He's the most decorated doctor in the ER. And when I met him a few years back, I was extremely attracted to him. But instead of getting into an affair, I resigned. Concentrated on being a great wife and mother. And for a time, being with him didn't even cross my mind. But like I said, when you lost your practice, you lost yourself. And I am no longer in love with you anymore. So you, so you're no longer in love with me? No. I don't understand how you say that unless you never loved me in the first place. So tell me this, Jackson never been around my son? Thomas, I probably should have told you this a few years back. Told me what, Angel? What could you possibly say now that's not going to make it any worse? Well, I slept with Jackson before you and I got married. And there's a chance Thomas Jr. might not be yours. Mama, who is Jackson? Junior. Now, what did I tell you about being in grown folks' business? Daddy, you okay? Not right now, so I, I can't do this work. You know what's funny? My old mother said that we look alike. When I was a child, our son, my son. <laughs> and you're trying to tell me that there could be a possibility that he's somebody else's son? A possibility, yes. And then furthermore, you at a restaurant that I take you to that we hang out at. I mean, do you even have any respect for me? Thomas, this has nothing to do with respect and everything to do with you losing everything that you had to get me in the first place. Listen, Thomas, I'm sorry that you had to find out everything like this. And I was going to tell you later on tonight, but I want a divorce. <clears throat> Look, I waited outside long enough for you two to work this thing out. I know y'all heard me blowing my horn. Bro, I know daggone well you're not up in my mama's house trying to tear my family apart. Thomas, right? Right. Listen, bro, you don't want no smoke with me. Secondly, you're not the only one Angel left in the dark in this whole situation. 
Now, Angel, Junior, we got a flight to catch to LA. Please, Dad, please. I don't want to go with them. I want to stay here with you. Thomas, Thomas, Thomas. Come on, son. You're almost there. Yeah, I know your mother's death cut you deep. I know losing the career that you passionately love stung you like a scorpion in the desert at Hell's Gate. If I die, let me die. In the army of the Lord, if I die, let me die. In the army. I know losing your angel made you walk right out of heaven. But that's not what made you pull that trigger and listen to that gun go off, only to deafen your pain for a few minutes because you already died in your heart. Son, you got one more vision in your mind that you just can't get rid of. Show me that one thing. Show me the one vision that killed you, that destroyed you, that made you feel less like living. Show me the vision, Thomas. Show me. Why? I would never understand why. I, I couldn't breathe. I couldn't focus. I couldn't think, feel, or anything. The pain, the pain was just, just too much to bear. I found myself on my knees, couldn't stand, but my will tried to stay strong. I was absolutely crushed, and the last person that I could depend on for real love was now gone. took my son away from me was the day that I heard my son and, and her lover were involved in a head-on collision with a truck coming in from the other lane. My wife and Jackson survived, but my son died. He died. He died instantly from the car crash. You feel like it's God's fault that he allowed that accident to happen? And it's your fault for not fighting your wife more, for allowing her to take your son away? Well, I mean, isn't it? Isn't it? I mean, had I just told her no and been more stern about it, my son would probably still be alive today. Thomas, you ever wonder why that gun went off and the bullet had the bad primer and the only thing you got left was a ruptured eardrum? Quit, Pastor, I, I, I never told you I tried to take my life. So how do you know about the gun and the bad primer? <laughs> Focus, Thomas. <laughs> faith is faith. It rains on the just as well as the unjust. It's like your mother always said. He will always give a way of escape. But after everything that I've done and said against God, I mean, how, how can he ever forgive me? The Bible says, he forgive those just as Christ forgave us. You can forgive yourself. Father God, Thank you.
I humbly come to you with, with all that I am, asking you to forgive me of all my shortcomings and of all the things that I've said and done to break your heart. But most of all, Lord, grant me the desire to love and forgive myself just as you loved and have forgiven me through the message of your Son, Jesus Christ. And also, Lord, I, I thank you for sending me my new angel, Pastor Banks. Excuse me, young man. I know you're praying and trying to get right with the Lord and all, but you can't be in the church at this hour. And besides, how'd you get in here anyway? I locked the church doors up myself last night. Well, maybe God must have shaken them doors up for me or something. <laughs> I mean, just like he did for Silas and Paul in prison. You better be glad that I don't take this Bible and slap you upside your head because I don't like smart mouth children. But since you tickled my spirit with that good word, I'm gonna let you slide for today. Thank you for that, appreciate it. And it sounds like your mother raised herself up a soldier in the army of the Lord. <laughs> you know one thing she did that, that is one thing that she did. Oh. Thomas, you don't remember me, do you? I'm your father's sister, Harriet. Your mother's name was Sonia Graham, right? That's my mother's name, but how do you know my mother? God works in mysterious ways. Come on, take a seat with me. Thomas, this here is my brother, Pastor Isaiah Banks. Once upon a time, he was the presiding pastor over this church. Before all of the renovations and such, he loved this church with all of his heart. But while loving this church, he had a lot of secrets. And no one should have those types of secrets while serving the Lord. Wait, hold on, because I was literally just talking to him like a minute ago. Boy, was you smoking that sticky icky before you came up in this sanctuary? My brother, your father, has been dead for over 30 years. <laughs> but the Lord does work in mysterious ways. Well, my brother lived a double life. Some would say a quadruple life, but quite frankly, it was none of their business. At any rate, Isaiah loved and served this church with his very being. But while loving this church, he also only loved one woman, and that woman was your mother. If there ever was such a thing as soulmates, your mother and father were the Jay-Z and Beyonce of that day. They were absolutely inseparable. But even with all of that love my brother received from your mother and from the church, he still had to deal with the biggest enemy of all, himself. Thomas, your father and my brother suffered from mental illness. It was a generational curse. Now, whether it started from slavery or the Prohibition era or Jim Crow or even the Reagan era, I'm not sure, but it was alive and well in him. Okay, so how did my father find resolve in loving the church and loving my mother? He didn't, Thomas. He didn't. Thomas, that's the reason why you never knew your father. And your mother, she stood by his bedside, even until the coroner came. 
My brother was in so much pain, but instead of praying to the Lord and asking him for strength, he decided to take his own life with the bullet of a gun. It's been happening from generation to generation, and I just don't want that to happen with you. So, what do you think about the church? I think it's absolutely amazing. You said my father used to preach here? Boy, he used to bring the house down. <laughs> For some reason, I totally believe that. Yeah. Now, there's my favorite mother of the church, Sister Harriet. How you doing today? Bishop, I am blessed, black, and highly favored in the Lord. I was just getting ready to go in the sanctuary and pray, yeah. and God sent me this miracle right here. Thomas, this is Bishop. Bishop, this is my nephew, Thomas Graham. Thomas, this is Bishop, the first person that put the Bible in your father's hand. Really? It's a pleasure to meet you, sir. How you doing? It's a pleasure. Glory be to God, Harriet. He's a splitting image of Isaiah. Mm-hmm, I was just saying the same thing myself. I was just showing him pictures of his father a second ago. Son, you can't imagine all the many nights your aunt and I prayed, praying that God would send you back home safely. Amen and amen. Thomas, your father was my best friend, a true man of God. The only one I knew when he preached in that pulpit, he was sincere and he preached with power and magnitude. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir, I understand that. Thomas, your dad was Peter and I was John. And whenever we tag team together, wow, it was like the day of Pentecost. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, I guess what Bishop is trying to say is that Thomas, we love you and we got you and there is nothing that you can do about that. That's right, Thomas, you're family now. And we gotta come together, spend more time with each other. Matter of fact, let's start watching some football games together. What's your favorite team? Man, we're Cowboys all day. What? Absolutely. What are you, have you been praying, Commanders? Both of y'all, hush your mouth, because this is the house that the Redskins built. Oh, Commanders. Oh my God. Cowboys. Redskins. Commanders. Uh, Cowboys. Uh, Redskins. <laughs> Wait a minute, Commanders now. Uh, Cowboys. Uh, always Redskins. No, 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 no. no. She's no. wearing blue. What? I'm gonna start praying for both of y'all. It's the commanders right now. Uh, Cowboys all day, every day. You with me, Lord? I oh, have the last word. Then you wanna pray. It is the Redskins. Wow, y'all are tripping. <laughs> Steve, what's going on, brother? Man, look, <laughs> I've been calling you all night, man. I've been losing the last bit of my mind because I thought you was... Thought I was dead in a ditch somewhere? I mean, can you blame me, bro? Nah, man, I'm blessed, man. I'm blessed, and you know, in the land of the living. Monica and I have been worried sick, man, and when we could not find you, <laughs> we just fell on our faces and started praying down heaven on, on your bed. Speaking of... Give me of. the phone, give me the phone, give me the phone. Hello, Thomas. Boy, you know when I see you, I'm gonna put hands on you, right? Oh be quiet, cause we're in the, no, be quiet, cause where in the world were you last night? Little sis, what's going on? We went to your house after Stevie told me what happened, be quiet, after Stevie told me what happened and we couldn't even find you. And I started to clean up your little nasty room, pigsty, and I was waving sage all up and down and through that thing to get rid of that negative energy all up in there. Cause you know I'm not having it. She ain't lying. Okay. Come on. But are you okay though? Yeah, now you know I love you like good cooked food now. I really appreciate you for blessing my spot. I know that went a long way to repay you guys and show you how much I love you guys. How about I take you to your favorite restaurant? Mm. All right, so give me about an hour, let me get home. I'm gonna get in the shower, I'm gonna change. I'm gonna meet you guys there, all right? Oh, plus I gotta tell you guys a story that you guys will never believe. All right, awesome, man. So we'll see you in the hour, bro. All right, sounds good. I'm gonna see you guys shortly, all right? All right, I love you guys. All right, man, peace. Where he say he was taking us to? Cause Don't I'm ready to eat. Don't worry about that. Go I'm ready to eat. Room, I'm bro. ready to eat. What are we going to eat? I'm about to get some all flat wings, lemon pepper with extra ranch on know, the you're going to go brush the rest of them teeth. Yeah. <laughs> 
Thomas. You don't want to throw a favorite toy away. This gun was your father's gun, and it was also your grandfather's gun. And I received it from his sister after he passed. My brother was in so much pain, but instead of praying to the Lord and asking him for strength, he decided to take his own life with the bullet of a gun. You got your life, your health, your strength, the breath in your lungs, and you got me. Son, God is God. He's not a man that he shall lie. If you were able to tell me that you tried to kill yourself 10 minutes ago, and you're still here, it's probably because he's not through with you yet. The Bible says, he forgive those just as Christ forgave us. You can forgive yourself. If you do this, there's nothing left of your bloodline. Do you know how many men in your family that I've helped take away their pain with this gun? Don't you do it, Thomas. You still need me. You still need me, Thomas. this letter reaches you in the best of spirits. I am the daughter of Kathy and Sean Grace. You sold my family out dream house about seven years ago, and since then, so much has happened. Unfortunately, my mother and father were killed in a car accident. But when I was going through my father's things, I came across this check that he insisted giving you a week before their passing. My father said that he remembered how kind you were and how you gave my family a deal and took a cut on your commission just because you wanted my family to grow in God and in this house. You even prayed with us. So please take this check as a token of our extreme love for being our ram in a bush. May God continue to bless and keep you throughout your life's journey. Sincerely, Hallelujah. Angel Grace. Hallelujah! Kid from the rift. Mm. 
with a dream, I would do it big. Mm. They said I was smoking, but I never tried to sing. They was going out to play, but I would stay up in the crib, writing how I lived on this paper. Mm. Some told me I was weird, some told me get your paper. California living, cause California my nature. Ding dong ditch was always disturbing neighbors. Parkside Village, never forget where I came from. When I get on, gon' change up. Nah, homie, we major. Home of the Rams, Dodgers, and the Lakers. Remember, used to ride shotgun, he would take us. On that 91 pot plant, sun out, windows down, so I yell at every time I'm on these stages. Cali. To the city with my windows down. And my music turned up to the max. It's been a minute since you heard it like this And everybody bobbing their heads as they hear that sound You know the beat taking you back, yeah You know that old school flavor don't miss You know you wasn't born in the 80s if you never bought an icy From the candy lady, she gon' check yes if she likes shit Soda cans in the spokes so of your bike make it sound like a motorcycle Jumping off the porch. Couches in my mama's best sheets and mess around and build a fortress. What you talking about, courtship? If you never took her on a date to the skating ring, and you wasn't a boyfriend. Instagram, who? who? Facebook, who? Do rag with the dude grease just to look cool. With my cut chuck paint, make the kicks look new. Your best friend's mama whipped them and then whooped you. You and I. 